They added something else they took. <laughs> they added right here, while they was taking gold and silver and ointments and frankincense, they took you. They added right in the Bible. They mentioned it right here. They're talking about the devil in the future. He's going to be taking gold and silver and ornaments and frankincense and slaves. You see it? Who's yeah. he talking about? What other things you know went over to Africa and took people to where this stuff comes from? Everything he named, and you read in Genesis, when they speak about the creation of the garden, and they say, where well, I read, mean, they give you the same list of things. So he's talking about right in Sudan and Ethiopia where the Kushites are, and don't let nobody fool you. Everybody sitting in that room who's from Puerto Rico, Cuba, all of y'all are Kushites. The languages ain't got nothing to do. He's divided us up to conquer us. We are all the same people. It says right in the Bible that Solomon's complexion was ruddy. A reddish color and like a golden bronze, and his hair was black, straight locks. And it said it goes on to describe Jesus, it got his feet like bone grass. So that covers all of us from the lightest skin Puerto Rican straight down to the blackest African. All of y'all are the same children, don't let him fool you. That's how he conquers us. He divides us and conquers us through that. Go ahead, read on. And the fruits that thy soul lust after before are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and good and goodly are departed from thee, and all thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off from the fear of her, so men weeping and wailing. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and they be saying, At last, at last. That great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, which is red, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the companies in ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like? unto this great city. This is like this is the greatest city that ever existed. Oh my goodness, where are we going to get to some hell? When will we ever live like this again? Everybody's panicking all over the world now because America's folded. You realize that all the allies of America are in a state of shock now? Because they were getting all their resources from America and now America's economy is falling. They're going, oh, what are we going to do? And she falls, what are we going to do? She's the bank. And that's what this book is describing. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing. That's an a Eastern custom at funerals. Women take the dust to the ground and pat on their face while they mow. And cried, weeping and wailing, saying, At last, at last, which is finally, finally, that great city wherein was made rich all that had ships, in the sea by reason of it, for in one hour she is made desolate. All of the merchants and foreigners who have caught stuff in this country are now suffering because America has nothing. Rejoice over her. Now we're talking to y'all again. <laughs> Rejoice over her, thy heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Isn't that nice? Now what did the Lord say concerning vengeance? What did Jesus tell them? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We don't have to be black panthers and young lords and get guns and go out looting and burning and acting stupid. We don't need a revolution. We need to understand the revelation. I've been coming here for about five minutes now. And what I do is I sit there and I listen. And uh, I've been coming long enough to figure out my answer to some of these questions. All right, number one. Uh, the word Amen, what does it originate from? From the Hebrew word Amin, from the original Arabic language Amana, which means something that can be trusted or true or honest. Uh, I have another question. Uh, the Crystal City, which I've heard, I've heard the name before Crystal City being a city in the center of the earth. No. The Crystal City is mentioned in the book of Revelations that would come down out of heaven. So, uh, I've heard also about some city 
in the center of the earth. Uh, scientists have, have recently made it public that they are convinced in the center of the planet Earth is not lava, but that it's hollow, and that, that there might be, they say, might be a tropical environment based on findings that they have about well, vegetation found out in the Antarctic, and we know there's no real do north on the planet, because when they get to a certain point, the magnetic needle goes off, so they're convinced that something is happening out there, and they're not sure what it is. The bottom line is that what you refer to as extraterrestrials or UFOs have been visiting Earth, and that's one of the places that they enter, and that's the center of the Earth, and that's been there for thousands of years, and it's been being utilized by the mystics of Tibet, uh, the Aztecs, and other people who are into galactical traveling, other than just the layman. I have one last question. Uh, in reference to Buddha, I'm told Buddha was a Muslim. His name was Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. Why people will say that Buddha was a Muslim is because the ultimate doctrine that Buddha professed was desire is the lead to suffering. That's what all of his studies led him to understand, that the more you desire, the more you'll suffer. The Buddhist religion that has mantras and chants and statues and idols, all these things was coined by men who after him wanted to worship him, the same way Jesus would have objected to statues of Mary and Joseph and St. Jerome and St. This and St. That. They would have, but after they passed on the higher life, men came along and built statues and what they consider honor and was disrespecting the doctrine. Buddha himself would have opposed idol worship. Okay? So therefore, what he would mean by that is that Buddha believed in one deity, he believed in the equality of all human beings, and he believed that the more men desire, the more they would suffer. That's the same thing a Muslim would believe. That's uh, Buddha. And also, there's Krishna, there's a uh, bunch of other uh, people that were... We'll address them according to your question. As you ask by name, we'll answer. If we just say a bunch of people, we might end up anywhere. Okay, Krishna. What about Krishna? Sure, Krishna was alive. He wasn't just deportrayed now. That's right. Krishna, who incarnated, which was considered the avatar of the ancient Hindi people, of the Brahma faith, he was thought to be God incarnate, the way Christ to the Christian today is God incarnate. He was 5,000 years before the Christian era of Jesus. He incarnated, and the works that he did amongst his people led them to believe that he was God in flesh. As time passed on, he'd be transformed from God in flesh into God. All right? And of course, there were millions of arguments about that, so certain interpretations, just like in Islam today, certain people have Muhammad exalted as the best of all the prophets. Other people say Muhammad was just a prophet. Other people say Muhammad wasn't even a prophet, etc., etc. As time passes on, men have this dormant demon in them. It makes them all to things to suit their desire or to please a specific ruler. So the same thing happened with Krishna. Krishna and Brahma became deities instead of mortals. Same thing with Shango, Obatala, Yemeya, and Ogun of the African faith of Yoruba. The same thing has happened in Christianity with saints. Man has been known to do that. So when these men were alive and they walked, they uh, basically, I'm told they're basically all preaching or teaching the same thing, peace and equality. But after they died, their followers uh, lost faith and started making up things about them. Is this true? Or came in contact with other great leaders from the past and had to fabricate things to appear to make their leader as great as previous leaders. Do you understand what that means? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't have a history of doing a bunch of miraculous things like, let's say, Jesus did. So when Christians and Muslims came in conflict with each other, Muslims had no real spiritual thing to talk about the way Christian did, so Muslims start to fabricate little stories and add them into the hadith and stuff to make Muhammad look like he was performing miracles, so they didn't realize the miracle of Muhammad was the Quran itself. So they had to make him miraculous, and next thing you know, he becomes somewhat of a deity. So yes, you're right, mortals did that. Mortals always come in and all the things. And that's how it happens. If people don't maliciously do it, they just do it. They mean well. Okay? <laughs>